I am Danielle Smith. That's my picture right there. I'm the new technical sales specialist for the West Coast. Uh, but for the past two and a half years, I've been the technical writer. I've been writing all the latest product manuals for Larson Davis. Um, I also make the procedural videos you see on YouTube. So if you've watched any of our YouTube videos, uh, you'll recognize my voice. So Larson Davis is a division of PCB Piezotronics. We specialize in making noise monitors and sound level meters. This is five ways to make better graphs, how to pick settings that give you what you want, understanding and capitalizing on the new G4 LD Utility software graphing feature. This webinar is showcasing the new graphing capabilities of G4 LD Utility. I want to start as basic as possible in case we have anybody who is really new. The Larson Davis sound level meters are complex, high-powered instruments with a wide breadth of functions and features. In this presentation, I'm going to go over some of the options for the Larson Davis Sound Advisor Model 831C sound level meter. Um, these optional features include time history, event measurements, octave band analysis, we call OBA, measurement history, and lastly, sound recording. All of these features will give varying reports of data, and we're going to go e over each one. Um, depending on your needs, you may need one or a combination of several options purchased with your meter. Um, support is available to determine the best options for your reporting needs. At the end of the um, webinar, there's going to be a link and some information of how to contact Larson Davis so we can give you more information. So here are the topics we will cover today. The five ways graphs can be used to best show our data. But uh, first, before we get into this, I want to go over the graphs themselves. G4 LD Utility is a free to download software program from Larson Davis. The graphing feature is included and not an extra add-on. I want to show you the basic features of the graphs so we all become familiar with its functions. Uh, what I've done here is I've installed G4 and I've opened an LD bin data file so I can show you the graphs. What we are looking at is a window in G4. On the top are the graphs, uh, the new feature, and below is the tabular data that we've had before. Um, if you would like to repeat some of the stuff I'm showing you, at the end of the presentation, I have a link uh, to a data file in a Dropbox, and you can download it, and you can play around with it yourself, which is kind of fun. So I've got a data file. The data file is 24 hours, um, and it's from the poll outside of Larson Davis headquarters. It has events and continuous sound recording. All right, so legend and key. So the top graph has the time history metrics for your measurement. And I'm going to press play here. You can toggle these metrics on and off in the legend. This is so you can make a report of only the necessary acoustic measurements or to single out a me metric, or you can use this to compare your metrics. This list can be up to eight metrics long. Um, I like to show LAEQ and LZ peak, even though my file has recorded LCEQ and LC peak in it. Now, I want to look further at my events so I understand what the sound source is. I'm interested in the sound if it comes from like a train horn in this example. So um, I want to identify that train horn. The zoom tool can be used to zoom into parts of the graph. Uh, if you want to play this sound, which I believe I do here after I zoom in, uh, if you could hear it, you could hear that it's a train noise. 
Uh, a little bit more about the Zoom tool. You can zoom while also in the OBA graph as well. All the graphs on display are synchronized, so the Zoom will zoom in to all of them. Edit bands. So edit bands work in two basic ways. The first way I'm going to show here is to exclude. So here I'm going to listen to this data file, and it is not a train horn like I'm looking for. It's actually a lawnmower. And so I'm going to select the data here, and then I'm going to select exclude data. It doesn't remove any data, and it doesn't change the original data. Once an edit band is added, a section at the bottom appears called modified results. So you can see there. And it shows what the data looks like without the data in the excluded version portion. So the second way is an offset. You can see that, so here's the exclude data, and there's an offset. Um, this is best used in what-if scenarios, like you want to see what the overall measurement LEQ would be if some portions of the graph were lower or higher in decibels. It's also useful when the trend of the measurement is moving in a predictable way, except one portion, and you want to identify the trend, so you would offset the anomaly. You can save these edit bands in the LDBIN files itself, and refer back to them later. All right, so here are, we're going to now go into the five ways to make better graphs. And we're going to start with time histories. When making graphs, the first thing you need to understand is that these are actually time history graphs. So without time history, there is no graph. Time history is actually the core option that opens up all the functions and features that I've been showing off and that we're going to continue to show throughout the rest of the webinar. With time history enabled, graphs are now available. Any of the acoustic measurements selected will be available graphically. There are non-acoustic metrics in time history that won't appear in the G4 graph, though, like temperature and weather. However, like always, they are in the data, and after exporting to an Excel document, you can do, you can do your own reporting. So time history, what is it? It's a period of samples of data, so when you have one second samples, each sample of data is one second long with all the user specified metrics for that second. So this is a measurement I did of my new puppies. I have the 831C sound level meter in my kitchen during the day while I was at work and I wanted to know the puppy schedule. So each second throughout the day I get a snapshot of sound you can tell when they sleep and when they are awake, and there's a time in an afternoon around 2 p.m. when they get real rowdy. All right, so now we're going to move on to the second, which is event-based measurement. What is an event? An event is when the sound exceeds a user-defined trigger level so the meter automatically begins flagging the data, and when the sound exceedance is over, then the event ends. Let's imagine uh, that there's a background noise sitting at about 50 decibels, and then an aircraft flies by, and it's at 67 decibels. Now, as we can see here, the trigger is set at 65 decibels, so the meter begins an event right at the beginning and it ends once the aircraft is no longer above 65 decibels. This is the way events are triggered when set to level. Another way an event is triggered is based on the background noise. This is called dynamic triggering. I have a link at the end uh, for a very informative video on dynamic triggering of loons making noises throughout the night. So if you'd like to learn more, I suggest that you look that up. 
So an event is automatically recorded into the time history, and it's portrayed here as the purple highlight. So you can see how the sound is affected over time, how long the event has lasted, and it even keeps account of how many events took place during the measurement. Um, in the new firmware update for the 831C, there are now other options for trigger sources for events, not just SPL. You can even use a running LEQ to trigger an event. All right, so now we're going to move on to sound recordings, our number three way. So there are two ways that the meter will record your sound for the measurement, event-based and continuous. And not every case is the same, and so you're going to want to know if you want to have event-based sound or continuous sound. Uh, let's talk about event-based first. So for every event triggered, uh, the first, say, seven seconds, that's your snapshot time, uh, is recorded. So you can see each one of these events has a sound recording associated with it. You typically use the sound recording for identifying what made the noise. Seven seconds is the typical time because by that point you can tell what triggered the event. Uh, in this case, so this exact measurement that you're looking at here, uh, this was during an environmental outdoor recording and it was hoping to study the behavior of loons. And, but events were being triggered every time water came on in a nearby house. So the sound recording for each one of these events lets you know that these were not the events you were looking for. And you identify that by listening to it. All right, so the second case is for sound recording is continuous. This is made by making measurement history samples and making the sound recording the same time as the length of the measurement history duration. And then these get stitched together. And look, it looks stitched together in the graph. You can see when it, the measurement history begins and ends and when the time for the sound recording begins and ends at that same time. Uh, the top blue bar are, is the sound recording, as you can see. And actually, even though it's ends and begins at these little ticks, uh, this playback is played back seamlessly. So if you go over the tick, um, you notice no difference. <clears throat> One thing that must be said about sound recording, though, that we have on the 831C is compression. The meter will compress the sound recordings, so it decreases the file size and saves in the headache of obnoxiously large files. All right, now we're going to go to octave band analysis spectrums, what we also call OBA. All right, so sound doesn't usually occur with a pure tone. Noise exists at many different frequency, tones, and intensities. Sometimes seeing the decibel level is not enough to understand our data. The top graph has our time history graph, and that's a decibel level of the LEQ as it gets higher and lower. And then below, at the bottom, we have our OBA graph. So what is OBA? Octave band analysis spectrum graphs are frequency on the y-axis versus time on the x-axis, and it's versus an amplitude which is color-coded. This picture of sound gives you the tools you need to identify signatures of sound sources. You can identify a sound once with a sound recording, listen to it, and then you look at the OBA signature, and from then on, identify the sound source without having to listen to each one. You can see it visually. Here are some OBA data that I've recorded in my sound measurements. The first one is a truck starting. The second one shows the frequency that the heater runs in and off, uh, runs in when it goes on and off. And the last one is a distant train horn, 
When I see similar sound signatures throughout my measurements, I can quickly identify it with just looking at it, which is faster than listening to it. I like to use this to identify events. So let's get back to the data we were looking at at the beginning. I'm going to press play here, and then I'm going to zoom in into the first event so we, get, we can see what the sound signature looks like. So if you remember, this was a train horn. So the train horn lives up here at about one kilohertz. And we're going to find another one. There's a space right here. And look, we have about the same signature here. It's just a little quieter. And now we know that both of them are train horns. Pretty cool. All right. So our very last one is generating a report. And I'm going to tell you how this is going to make your graphs better. So this is an included feature with G4 LD Utility. Um, making a report happens nearly automatically. The tabular data gets generated into the first couple pages, and the subsequent pages are for graphs. The graphs in the PDF will be the exact view that you are currently looking at in G4. So this is where your Zoom tool comes in handy. The view on the graph will be the exact view in the report. Like if your client is only interested in sound during a portion of the measurement. I'm going to show you generating a report. So first I'm going to zoom in to this portion because this is all I'm interested in. And then I'm going to make the legend show all of the metrics. And then I'm going to leave my values panel right here, and then kind of come up here to the menu and generate the report. So you can hide the legend, you can show the value box at a certain point, and then generate the port report. And if you don't like how it turned out, you can scrap it and try again. You can always open up an LD bin file, even one you made years ago, and generate a report with colored graphs, even though this is a new feature for G4. So you can print your generated PDF, save it, share it, add it to the cloud. It is your report of data. You own it. I'm going to open up the slide for our links. So the PDF itself, or the um, PowerPoint itself will be available next week, so you can download it and get these links here. But here's our Dropbox file that you can download and take a look at. Here's the link for downloading G4. I just usually type it into Google, Larson Davis G4, so I can download it. And like I said, that's a free software program that we offer. Um, here's the dynamic triggering video that I talked about earlier, if you want to learn more about event triggering. And then contacting Larson Davis, if you want to take a screenshot, here's our web address, a phone number you can call, and an email. And as always at Larson Davis, we will contact you back as soon as we can, and we're ready and willing to help with any of your questions or concerns, or if you have any questions that you didn't ask today, you can go ahead and email those questions and we'll get them answered. But thank you everyone for attending this webinar, and I hope that you attend the other ones in this series, and thank you so much.